Welcome to this video, great to have you here. In this video, we'll have a look at how we can upload files from our Angular app to a server. As a server, I will, in this video, use a Firebase Cloud function, which I wrote in an earlier video on this channel, but any backend that accepts forum data or binary file uploads will do. So let's dive into this and see how we can actually get a file from an input through Angular to a server. Obviously, we need an Angular app to upload files, and I'm in a brand new project created with the CLI. Nothing has been added to this project. It's completely empty. I just cleaned up the app component HTML file and only added a heading saying file upload. Now, I get a couple of goals here. One goal is to add a file input element that allows us to, well, attach files. Of course, I then also want to upload these files. That's one of the primary goals of this video. I also then want to show how we can add a button that indirectly triggers the file input element in case you don't want to directly have that in your uh, app. But one step after the other. Let's start simple by adding an input of type file. This is a default input element shipping with HTML, which allows us to, well, get file inputs. One important note, if you're using this in an Angular form, this can't be registered as a form control where the attached file would automatically sync to your form object. You always have to fetch this differently. And you do fetch it by adding a change listener. This will trigger whenever the file selected by the user will change, which is typically the point where you are interested in the file. So here I will execute an on file selected listener and forward my event object. Now I need to add that listener in the TS file, so on file selected, and I know that I get some event object here. Again, on file selected is just a method getting executed here. Now in this on file selected method, I want to do something with that. First of all, I'll simply log the event to the console so that we can see what's inside of it. Let's save everything and go back and open the developer console here on the right. And now if we choose a file here, I prepared one here, and I click open, we get this event object where we get all kinds of information. A very interesting piece of information is in the target. There we got this target element, this is this file input, and as a file input it has this special files key, which is an array of all the files which were selected, in case you have a multi-select tool. Here I have only one element, so the first element, actually is the file I just chose. And this is the file we can now upload. Now what you can do is you can add some logic to immediately f uh, upload the file whenever this event occurs. Or maybe you want to wait until the user presses some button. So maybe you have a upload button. And this could of course be also a submit button in some form of a type button where you then have a click listener or in a form, the ng submit listener on the overall form, where you then trigger on upload. Now, this would be an alternative setup. We have this extra on upload function. And in order to use the file here, we simply have to store the file in a maybe selected file property, which initially is null, and which we then here set to this selected file is equal to event target and then remember, we had that files property where we then had a couple of files. Let's pick the first one. And that is the file object itself. Now we're storing this in selected file and we can upload it here in on upload. That leaves us with one question. How do we upload a file? We do it through the Angular HTTP client. For that, we need to go to the app module and enable that client by importing the HTTP client module from at angular common http that's the path to that module we simply add it to imports then and with that we can inject the http service into any service or component where we want to use it now you could create an extra service for that i'll simply inject it into my component here so i'll add a constructor and add my http property which will be of type http client this client now needs to be imported so let me add an import here at the top of this component, HTTP client from, and then it's also at angular common HTTP. 
with that, we can use that client in this component to upload the file. So in on upload, I can then reach out to this injected property. And there I want to send a post request. Now the URL I want to send it to actually is the URL of this Firebase Cloud function. I created in this, this, I guess here, this video. So this is a video where I created this function. It's a cloud function, which simply accepts incoming post requests with a form data payload, where we can then extract the file from. So I will send a post request and then I need the URL which I copy from my Firebase console. And of course you can use any other backend function that accepts form data. So this is the URL I wanna send my request to. Now I need to configure this request a little bit. I need to add my body. And as I said, this body should be of type form data. So I will construct it here. I'll name it FD, new form data, which is a default JavaScript object we can construct. And then I will simply append some fields here. For example, my image file, which will have a value of this selected file and where I use this selected file. And now I need the file name. Now, if you're not sure which property this is, we can get auto completion support, at least in Visual Studio Code, by explicitly casting this here. We know this will be of type file, which is a default JavaScript object. And therefore here we will also store a file eventually. So let's add this type annotation here too. And now we get auto completion here and we know there will be a name property. So this is now my whole form data. We could also add additional fields if we needed that. I'm now going to send this or add this as a body. Now you don't need to set the content type. This should be set automatically. And we can now instead simply subscribe to the response. So there we will get a response, which for now I will simply log to the console. So let's try it out, I'd say. Let's simply, first of all, pick a file, this one here maybe. Now it's stored and now let's hit upload. And I get back, it worked, which is actually the message my Firebase Cloud function sends back if it works. I can confirm this by visiting the storage in my Firebase storage. And there I got two files because of that other image transformation uh, function I also set up in an earlier video. But there I can confirm this is the current date and time. So this was uploaded right now. So this is already how easy it is to upload a file. This is all it takes in its basic form. But maybe you want to do more than just upload the file like this. And before we dive into that, just a side note, of course, you could have also just sent the binary itself. So just selected file if your API endpoint accepts that binary. So if it doesn't require form data, but directly wants the binary, just a side note. But as I said, maybe you want to do more. So let's add an object where we configure this request. Now, let's say you want to track the progress of your file upload. Then you can add report progress and set it to true as a config. And also, and that's important, you need to set observe, which normally would be the extracted response to events. This means you will get all the individual events during the file upload. So now we'll actually not get the response here, but all events. And now if I save this and I go back to our application and I choose the same file again and I upload, you see we got different events here. These are the different upload events and eventually we get also the response. So there we got the different event types and you see the loaded and the total amount. So how much has been uploaded and how much is the total amount of to be uploaded. We can use that information by first of all importing HTTP event type here to map these type numbers to um, actual names we can easier understand. And then here we can check if event type is equal to HTTP event type, the thing we just imported, upload progress. If that's the case, then I want to output upload progress and set this equal to event. And now keep in mind, here we got loaded and total. So if we want to express this as a percentage, it's event loaded divided by event total, maybe times 100 and round that. So math round event loaded by event total times 100. And then here 
we could output percent after this. So like that. And if we got a different type, so else if event type is equal to HTTP event type response, well, in this case, well, we got the response, right? So we want to output that. So here I can then console log event and that should be my response. Let's save that and let's try it out. If I go back and I choose the same file again and I hit upload, you see we got the upload progress. Um, round wasn't the best idea. It always rounded it up to 100%. So let me quickly fix this by first multiplying with 100 here. And then let's try it again. So put the multiplication inside the parentheses and hit upload again. And now you get different upload progresses. And finally, at the end, after the response is back, we get our HTTP response here, where we could read the body, for example. And that is how easy we can upload a file. Now let's say we want to enhance this a little bit and for some reason we don't want to have that file input here but we want to have some other button in our template. So let's say here we have a button which is also of type button where we have maybe pick file as a caption. And when we click this then we actually want to trigger this input which is hidden. Well let's simply hide it, hide it by setting the style display to none. So it will be part of the DOM, but it's not visible. Well, we can give this a local reference. Let me quickly distribute all the attributes and properties over multiple lines to make this easier to read. We can get this a, get this a local reference, like file input. And then here on the click event on that button, we could simply trigger file input click like that. And that simply proxies the click to that hidden input. So with that, if I save this, I got two buttons, if I click pick file, the file picker opens, even though it's hidden, and I can still upload the file just as before, but now with the hidden file picker. And that's actually all I wanted to show you about file uploads with Angular, with the HTTP client. You learned how you can track the progress of the upload, how you can attach a file and fetch a file to begin with. And that's really all that's to it. I hope this helps you in your future projects and I'd be very happy to also welcome you back in future videos.